Hey guys, I've been doing a lot of videos about different things going on now, speculation and everything, and I want to do something a little different today. I wanted to go back and look at something from my childhood that was really important to me. This was probably, uh, probably 15, 16 years ago. I was about, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. And back then, we didn't have internet we do now where there's high speed internet and everything. We were kind of dependent on magazines and basically TV to get a lot of our video game news and just, just gameplay videos and everything. And back then, we had a channel that's not on the air anymore. It's called G4. It actually went off the air probably two years ago now, almost. And that is what we used back then to see reviews and news and everything because we were kind of on dial-up back then. So I wanted to kind of look back at this channel that I, that I loved so much as a kid. I figured maybe we could look at some of the shows and everything and kind of go over it. So maybe some of you, you guys who didn't see any of these shows or even just come across G4 ever could kind of take a look and just, just see these episodes that I'm talking about of things like Icons and X-Play, they had Attack of the Show, there's, that even, there's even a show called Portal where they followed someone around EverQuest, an actual like, like sprite around EverQuest and made a whole story about it. So I figure we could look over all this stuff and I could even go over what happened to them because eventually they turned into one of the worst channels on, on network TV at the time. So why don't you guys sit back, relax, and we'll kind of look back at this old G4 channel that, that kind of fell by the wayside with the internet. Do you remember when G4 was awesome for gamers? You know, before they started playing reruns of cheaters and cops back to back for hours on end? Back when we had shows like Icons and X-Play and not Spaceballs, the animated TV show? What? Yeah, this was an actual TV show on G4, and you guessed it, it was terrible. Maybe we'll look at this sometime in a future episode, but for now, please just take my word for it. I think my favorite show at the time was Icons. Imagine documentaries based around gaming industry leaders, history, and literal gaming icons. The production value was high, and they would get interviews with all types of people, even getting Miyamoto several times talk about Mario or the original Nintendo system. As a young kid, I learned a lot from Icons, and I'll never forget the episode about the original Nintendo. They showed just how bleak the video game market was and how much of a long shot the Nintendo actually was at the time. I mean, just take a look at the opening for this. Tell me it doesn't make you want to watch the entire episode right away. In an era when games were dead. Kaboom! There was virtually no console market in the U.S. Nobody bought consoles, nobody bought video games. An unknown company takes a big gamble. Nintendo was not well known. In fact, newscasters would mispronounce the word Nintendo. They just couldn't get it right. This is the story of the rebirth of the gaming industry. What we've done is to single-handedly recreate a dead industry. Suddenly Nintendo, a Japanese newcomer, comes in and has a new console and says, Hey everybody, let's play games again. The Nintendo Entertainment System completely revitalized what was a dead industry. It re-injected life. It made kids love video games again. This is the NES. If you get a chance to look up one episode of Icons, make sure you check out the Nintendo episode. You actually might learn something new. When G4 first showed up on TV, it had like the best shows for gamers at the time. I mean, I was a little middle school kid who just came home from school one day just flipping through the channels you know of course you watch the basics Toonami with Dragon Ball Z you know reboot and all of that but I'm going through the channels afterwards and I come across this this show that's just showing video game trailers and it even showed gameplay videos now as you know, I'm a little kid I'm confused I didn't as far as I know there was no TV show that was about that so I start looking through the guide at the time this is new we got this guide button on the remote that's that's pretty common now back then it was it was it was brand new this guide button you start going through I start realizing this this whole channel is dedicated to video games so you know as a middle school kid I'm I'm hooked now I mean who wasn't now at the time the GameCube and Xbox and PS2 were in the prime of their generation since I was young and had to rely on my parents to buy games, I wasn't able to get many new games unless Christmas was right around the corner. I loved Cinematech because I could see in-game cinematics from games that I didn't have access to otherwise. I remember watching the cinematic from Animusha over and over again, astounded by the graphics and violence. 
There was also a really cool five-minute gameplay video of Maximo that looks great. If you didn't guess it by now, I was a GameCube kid at the time, so anything PS2 was new to me. There was even a more adult version of Cinematech called Nocturnal Emissions that only aired at night. It was Cinematech, but based around sexy cutscenes from games. This was obviously geared towards male viewers or younger kids who wanted to sneak downstairs at night and get their first taste of censored boobs. Now, believe it or not, back in 2002, we actually had to read magazines for video game news and reviews. G4 had a show called X-Play that would try to provide us with both in a half-hour time slot, and I liked the reviews and previews of different games. They even did top 10 lists on air, which was the first at the time from what I can remember. I don't think I ever saw a top 10 list uh, in video form until I watched this. Unfortunately, over time, there was a lot of friction between producers and Adam Sessler, coming to a head when Adam was fired directly after taping. You can even see him whipping his head around here at the end of the show, the executives waiting off camera to fire him. That's how serious it got. Yeah, that actually happened. He was on set, finished filming, executives are off camera, ready to fire him, and you can see in the video, he whips his head around and looks right at these guys. And that was just that was just the start of just a downward spiral for, for all of G4, whether it be Cinematech, X-Play, even Attack of the Show. Ratings were slipping and slipping fast, and they really had no one to blame but themselves. And honestly, the media just killed them after that. I mean, you have reruns of Cops, Cheaters, and just some of the stupidest shows that did not belong on that channel. Nothing gaming-oriented. You had one episode of Attack of the Show maybe a week, and that was it. Nothing else. And after that, YouTube, Let's Players, everyone just took over that whole media market, and that was it for G4. With slipping ratings and heavy competition from the internet, G4 decided to move away from what made the channel popular in the first place. They canceled most of their gaming-related shows and started replaying more shows that appealed to the mainstream, like Cheaters and Cops. They even decided to acquire shows like Star Trek and Quantum Leap to pull in the sci-fi crowd. By 2013, it was impossible to find any show that was based on video games on G4. And then, on December 31st, 2014, G4 ended its broadcasting the same way it began, with a game of Pong. I remember hearing about the last episode of G4... Uh, they were going to show, basically, they were going to show Attack of the Show, then they were going to show uh, an episode of Pong, basically just Pong, literally them playing back and forth, and it was going to it was gonna end and signify the ending of G4. And I remember I sat down and watched this. This was midnight on December 31st. I remember it was it was New Year's Eve, and I was like, you know, I'm going to watch it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what happens. So they play this episode of Pong back and forth, and it just faded away into, into darkness. And it was, you know, it was really sad to see because in a way it kind of it kind of signified my my childhood as well, kind of fading away and me just getting just older. And it was it was, you know, it wasn't a good feeling. I, I kind of watched this channel that I would I would watch after school, whether it be middle school or early high school. And then even, a, you know, my senior year of high school watching that because they had 360 stuff on there. 360 came out my senior year of high school. And it was, you know, it, it was it was weird to see because in a, in a way it was it was kind of, you know, it was my it was my childhood just kind of fading away with this video game channel that to a lot of people might not make sense. But if you've ever had something that you, you, you know, you had when you were a kid and it got lost, maybe you understand in this. It, it feels kind of weird to say, but in this case, I kind of I kind of got sad seeing this this channel that I had no affiliation with other than just, you know, fond memories of just go away. And then I think they turned to the Esquire network and and now you just watch American Ninja Warrior on it. So, great. I'm glad they used the match of Pong to signify the ending of the channel. It just felt right. They ended the channel just the way it started. I couldn't help but feel older as I watched the game of Pong slowly grow smaller until it disappeared. Honestly, I was a little emotional. And that's it. After shutting down production, they haven't done anything else with G4. The name any affiliated networks and that's I don't see it ever coming back uh, at this point honestly YouTube has kind of become G4 if you think about it you can go on YouTube you can find documentaries on games you can find let's plays you could find news uh, pretty much everything competitions for esports you can you can pretty much find everything that was on G4 on YouTube so at this point G4 technically became obsolete because a lot of us don't watch TV now anyway, and that content on YouTube is on demand, so I don't have to wait for a certain time slot to come on to watch icons if I want, because people are making documentaries anyway. I think I like G4 because it makes me remember a simpler time. 
No, not so simple, where we were in the Dark Ages playing Atari, but a time where I was old enough to appreciate games, but not so old enough to have to worry about paying a mortgage or going to work every day. Back then, we were just gamers, not part of the system in an office building, stressed from deadlines or bills. It might not even be G4 that I missed so much as the time period. For all the crap G4 tried to acquire and push on their network, there were some truly compelling shows to tune in for. This was when the internet was still pretty young and most of us had nothing else to do but watch TV or play video games. So it made sense that a channel based on video games was popular. Unfortunately, as the internet became more popular and accessible with high-speed internet introduced to the mainstream, we all just kind of fell out of watching TV since most of the content was online right away. G4 is pretty much what we get on YouTube now. Tons of videos based around video game reviews, gameplay, and even some comedy. I'll never forget G4 since it was part of my life growing up, and it's still worth checking out some of the shows since they are legitimately interesting and may hit a nostalgia bone or two. And that's it, guys. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section below, uh, and also let me know about some of your memories from G4 if you watched it when you were younger, or maybe you're just finding out about some of these shows now. Let me know what you think of them down below. Make sure you give us a thumbs up if you like the video, and definitely subscribe. I'll do more of these videos going forward about different systems, games, anything like that. So until next time, guys, we'll see you then.